Item 10D is uh, adopt a resolution approving installation of a new 10-foot no parking zone on Genevan Avenue, beginning at the northeast corner of the intersection of Genevan and Cypress Avenues. Honorable Mayor, Council Members, uh, good evening. This item was initiated by uh, one uh, resident residing on uh, Cypress Avenue. The concern uh, raised by the resident was the limited side distance at the intersection of uh, Cypress and uh, uh, Genevan, uh, mainly uh, raising the concern about uh, uh, movement on uh, South uh, Cypress and, of course, you want to see the map also. Uh, the main concern expressed was uh, for the movement on uh, Cy South Cyprus and uh, the possible conflict uh, with uh, uh, west direction on uh, uh, Genevan. Based on the concern raised by the resident uh, uh, staff followed up with a uh, analysis and field assessment uh, after the analysis, they've concluded that uh, the uh, existing site distance is around uh, 200, uh, uh, should be 280 feet for any uh, left uh, turn movement and about 240 feet for uh, any uh, cross uh, movement. And the existing site distance is around uh, 200 feet. Considering uh, the low speed uh, on both on Genevan and uh, Cyprus, which is uh, 20 miles per hour at this location, and also the accident history for that location, which is uh, three accidents in the last three years, which were not uh, uh, side distance uh, related, and the high premium for parking uh, for this area, staff uh, recommended no action to the uh, TSPC for uh, this issue. At uh, the TSPC meeting, uh, six residents uh, showed up. Uh, those uh, residents who showed up uh, at the TSPC meeting uh, did not support uh, implementation of uh, uh, or additional limitation of uh, the parking and the implementation of uh, uh, red curb. Based on the discussion, at the T uh, even if uh, the TSPC uh, agreed and supported uh, uh, step assessment on, uh, uh, on our recommendation and uh, on the facts, based on uh, concern uh, raised by some of the residents, about uh, the safety at this intersection. Uh, they wanted to come up with a, um, uh, some kind of improvement of the safety of this intersection, reason why they were looking for some uh, uh, minor improvement, some kind of improvement of safety at this intersection. Uh, based on the discussion, they came uh, uh, up with the recommendation to implement a 10-foot uh, red zone at uh, the northeast corner of Genevan, minimizing the impact on parking in this area. And uh, that is the recommendation what you have uh, before you for uh, your consideration. This uh, uh, 10 feet uh, red zone at that corner will have uh, a minimum impact on uh, the parking in that area. Uh, this afternoon, uh, staff went out uh, to re-verify uh, that uh, typically one uh, truck is uh, historically parked at that location and uh, just verifying the, the distance where the uh, truck is parked versus where would be the 10-foot uh, parking restriction, and certainly uh, the distance uh, between uh, the curb and, uh, uh, and uh, the truck is more than 10, 10 feet, is closer to uh, 16, 17 feet, that uh, the parking would have, uh, uh, would have a uh, very uh, limited impact at this location. 
I am, uh, that this is, uh, this concludes my presentation. If you have any follow up questions. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So, what do you measure the 10 feet from? I mean, I, I think I caught that. I mean, as if, I because mean, I know it's a rounded, rounded. From, uh, the, from the edge of that uh, rounded portion. So you have the handicap ramp. Correct. And from the edge of the handicap ramp was measured, measured the distance back on Geneva. Okay. So roughly where that truck, where we've witnessed where that truck is, is more than 10 feet Correct. from that measurement. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? Action by the council? Oh, are we going to speak? Please. Uh, step to the podium, please. Just tell us your name and your street. Sure. My name is Christina Gogol, and I live at the property that the red zone is proposed to be installed. Um, my husband and I, Frank Sedano, we oppose any length of the red zone at that location, any length. Parking in the neighborhood is already greatly limited. Uh, the community would be better served with a stop sign. Unfortunately, the stop sign study that was done in July of 2011 was done during the summer months, where the traffic is less. It should have been studied again. It should be studied again when the schools are in session, because there is definitely an increase of traffic that travels on Genevieve at that time, and uh, the three months in summer, it, there is a, a decrease. Um, the initial complaint that was made about the you know, having a, a visibility problem there was done in November, and that's when schools are open. Um, the two accidents of the three at that intersection I actually witnessed, and both of them involved vehicles that were traveling the opposite direction. They were traveling eastbound. So there wasn't even, and it, I know that was stated that that wasn't the issue with that side, but it would better serve that intersection if we had a stop sign, but going both directions on Genevieve. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> good, Irene. She did good. <laughs> I, I happen she to did live, good. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to live on Acacia one block um, east of the exact same area and I know how difficult it is to get out in and out and the, the site, the view is from both sides. You can't see who's coming down, you can't see who's coming up and it, you just have to be very, very cautious. I don't know if a I don't know if a 10-foot red zone there was, is going to solve much. Um, if they get it, I want one. <laughs> so, and then I'm sure people up and down are going to want one, and then you know it's just going to compound all the other problems we have. It, did anyone reach out to the person who parks the big truck there? And oh, it is you. Do you have any? No, I, 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 if, if, oh. you're gonna re, if you're going to respond, do it at the podium, so because you're on TV. Oh, so, yeah. I'm sorry about that. We're, uh, we're passing. We're passing around a photo I took and, and we oh, showed okay. your truck. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I'm sorry I interrupted your question. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. I, I, I guess I'm not sure what a 10-foot red zone would accomplish. I understand why people would feel better with one. Um, but I don't think it's going to accomplish much. Uh, that whole Genovan Avenue and its stop signs and the parking and all, everything is needs to be looked at instead of a piecemeal thing. So that's just my comment on it. But thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, I'm uh, Frank Sedano. I'm the owner of the red truck. Uh, the reason why the red truck's parked there is because when we parked it around the corner, then we couldn't park our other two cars. We, our, we don't, our driveway doesn't have a spot to park the other car, but that's really not the question. What I was going to say is that by the stop sign being there, if you look down by Allen School, there's a stop sign in Allen School, and then there's the one block next, going up that doesn't have a stop sign. Our block doesn't have a stop sign. The next block doesn't have a stop sign. And then there's the next block up there that has a stop sign. If you go up Genovan, it's like every two blocks does. And we're the, like the four blocks. So when they take off from Allen School, they're hitting third gear by the time they come flying past our. So coming out there really does, you know, whether it's my truck, somebody else's truck, whatever it is, 
they're in full speed ahead going to the next stop sign when they go by. So that's why we're suggesting more of the stop signs to keep it in. You know, it'd be the natural progression of the stop signs. Thank you. Thank you. Rico. I was just going to ask. I love these topics. <laughs> like back home. Uh, the stop sign's been asked. And the staff is reasoning for not, uh, it probably doesn't meet some criteria, but could you uh, let us know as to why? Well, a uh, stop sign study was conducted uh, last year uh, based on uh, uh, one other request at that time. And uh, uh, based on that uh, stop uh, sign study, uh, this intersection does not meet the warrant and was discussed with TSPC and TSPC uh, agreed with uh, staff recommendation uh, not to install a stop sign at that location. The, the question came up about the time in which it was studied, uh, in school session versus out of school session <coughs> and the drop of the traffic. Uh, based on uh, so big difference between, uh, yes, uh, can be a difference between uh, uh, the traffic volume uh, during uh, school versus uh, off school uh, uh, season. But based on the volume difference between those two intersections, uh, Cyprus has, uh, during the peak hour, less than 10% of uh, uh, the volume on Genevan. Uh, even if, let's say, uh, during the school, that would be a little bit higher, even then uh, this intersection would not uh, uh, warrant any uh, uh, stop sign. But if it's your desire, uh, this uh, uh, study or uh, the intersection study can be repeated during uh, uh, sc uh, school season, if that is your desire. And I appreciate that, and I, and I just as a suggestion for myself, is that when we are studying uh, areas near school, I think we need to take that in consideration, that we do study them at the, <coughs> the highest peak possible, uh, because obviously with school in, school out, and that being so close. But it does pose, as Council Member O'Connell said, is that going down Genevan and a lot of these without the stop signs, we, you do have some of those distance issues. Uh, I, obviously, we saw the truck, so that causes maybe a, a greater problem. But is that 10-foot red curb actually going to make that significant difference there opposed to other places um, is, is kind of a question I'm wrestling with as well. Uh, our initial recommendation was uh, uh, to take no action. And that was a right course of action in our opinion at that time. Uh, still, uh, in our opinion, uh, the 10 uh, foot uh, red zone will not really make any big difference, but uh, certainly uh, uh, the residents and uh, the TSPC felt that they tried to do uh, some uh, degree of improvement and they felt that uh, this uh, 10 foot uh, red zone uh, maybe will improve uh, 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 the visibility, making sure that no uh, vehicle will be parked closer than uh, 10 feet to that intersection. Even if the existing truck, how I said before, will really is parked further away than 10 feet. Anyone else? Yeah. Michael? It, sounding, it sounded like you said that um, initially the recommendation was not to do anything and then the 10 foot was sort of a, um, a compromise, Thank you. a compromise um, so that it can, uh, so that something could be done to, to alleviate the issue there. Um, but I'm wondering if, if it's not really going to improve the site visibility, and I think the report said that it would probably be um, a lot longer of a, a red zone that would be required to give the adequate visibility. Um, th was the the speed of the cars on Genevain, that is it, does that traffic, was that a factor in, in determining what that length, of that required length is? And are, is there any issue with with speeding on that street that aggravates the situation? 
Uh, it's no complaint, wasn't the speeding on Genevieve, really wasn't part of the complaint. Uh, I'm per I, you know very well that this is a uh, flat area of Genevieve with uh, reasonable good visibility at this location. And how was said before, you have a stop sign uh, two streets further uh, east and west uh, from that location. Uh, you already have uh, uh, many uh, stop sign on Geneva, uh, and uh, um, based on our studies, uh, any additional or certainly at this location, additional stop sign at this location would not improve the situation. And, and we're in, in this. Uh picture that we're looking at right now, we only see um, the two intersections, but if we were to look at, um, at, a, at a broader area, what does, what does it look like, uh, and, and I live not too far from there, but if, I, if you were to keep going up Cyprus, um, are there opportunities within there? I know that there's some curves that come in up there that kind of, I mean, it's not as, as uh, um, as angular as it looks in this picture, but, but I'm wondering, are there opportunities for people to maneuver around and come out at a different intersection that might be a little more, um, I don't know, friendly to, uh, to crossing? Genevan, you have to cross Genevan, and this is a very safe intersection relative to any other intersection. It's, this is a low speed road, boat, you, you are talking about 25 uh, five mile per hour. Well, um, and considering the geometry of this uh, intersection is relatively safe versus uh, the other intersection in that area which has more angled intersections. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that the, um, the school district offices are only a couple of blocks down and they actually have, it, there's a, a big uh, lawn area in front of there that actually helps with the visibility as you pull up to that intersection. So mm -hmm. what I'm wondering is, do the people that live in that neighborhood have an opportunity to get out and reach the other streets, or are they locked into coming out at this point? I can answer that. I can, I can. <laughs> Since I live there, there if, no, I mean, you can go to Canes and go around, but eventually if you're crossing Yes, you can, I should take back. Yes, you can go Correct. to Canes and go yes. up to Oak or, or left on Elm, and those both yes. have stop signs. So yes, you can do it that way. Um, you could. In my experience, the, the, the problem from my experience going across from Acacia is the cars coming, they're eastbound, they're coming down, as the, uh, the lady was saying. They, there's a stop sign at Oak, and then as they leave that stop sign, they kind of gun it and come it's like a nice little roller coaster effect down to Elm, and that's the next stop sign. So you do, especially when school is in session between 745, because I took my kids to school, between 745 and 810, you take your life in your hands trying to cross Genevieve, going right or left. Um, and I don't know what the solution is. Either we, you know, we can make it like Crystal Springs and have no parking on there, which I don't think will last very long. Um, if we put stop signs at every single cross section, you're going to have people who run them anyway, and then people who think they're going to be stopping are going to get squished because those people don't stop. It, I, I don't know. I don't know if we should look at the whole the whole of Genevieve at some point and see if there's solutions that that work for the whole inner uh, the whole length of Genevieve but um, that that's my input no thanks Irene I appreciate that I could, and like I was my point was that um, there are some decisions that people can make when uh, navigating through those streets and I know that there are intersections that are easier for me to cross and I tend mm -hmm. to know where those are and rather than making a, a token gesture that may not have any impact, maybe we should be looking for a, a better solution or um, a more, maybe a more holistic. A more holistic solution. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to find that word myself. <laughs>
Why don't we plead with the drivers? <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a real problem with some drivers in this community because you put up stop signs at every intersection, they're still not going to stop. Uh, uh, I stood here in six years on the uh, Traffic Safety Committee and I go out there with an open mind and I stand there or I sit there and I just watch. And living in this community for almost 30 years, I know Genovan, I know all these cross streets, and it's not the corner. It's beyond. It's the fourth parking space, you know, because, yeah, you can pull out, you know, you can have 10, you know, you can have that false sense of 10 feet of, of uh, safety, and you pull out, and there's that car that you didn't see. I mean, I think we've got a resident here who's mindful of the situation and gladly doesn't have a large truck that really blocks the view. Uh, I've got this picture, and I looked at it, and I go, There's, I see no problem. It's nice that you park there, but even if you did park up to the corner, my main concern is beyond that tree, looking, you know, looking east. And I think if you do something here, you're going to have, uh, you have some other issues when, once you start going up the hill, because then you have elevation changes, you have cars that are canted, and you know, speeding up and trying to gun it to get into the intersection because they're sitting on a hill. Yeah, so um, I'd be in favor of looking at it, studying it more, uh, whether holistic is what it's about. But uh, um, yeah, I realize that this community was built way back when and cars are, you know, are more plentiful and uh, drivers are not paying total attention all the time. But I don't, I don't think the red curb is, is the answer here. Okay. Um, I agree. Um, 10 feet is 10 feet, and it's like a, a token just to appease, for appeasement, let's just put it that way. I mean, if you're going to do red, do red and just don't let people park and let people have a clear view. But that's not going to happen because everybody has three and four cars nowadays, and there's no way to restrict that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't use garages. They use the street and the driveways. And so... It's a real issue. Um, so having said that, would anyone like to introduce the resolution for adoption? No one's willing to introduce the resolution for adoption. So um, I think we send it back to you and uh, the uh, traffic safety and parking to, as we said, come up with a more holistic solution to this particular situation. Thank you very much. Thank you.